I want to challenge you. Do something about your vision in 2024 because God is waiting to reveal something unique to you to make you most blessed. Well, good morning and welcome to another Saturday morning, the last Saturday of 2023 to Time Out. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining me. I want to ask you this morning, do you have a vision? for your life for 2024 and if you do what are you going to do about that vision next year now before I share something about vision that's very practical I like to quote that scripture in Proverbs 28 18 and one of the translations says that without vision you perish you can't exist I believe vision is like oxygen in our lungs If we stop having oxygen, we just can't survive. And I believe vision in your life is what gives credibility to everything that you do. It's like a life source in your life and in my life. So the Bible warns us and the Message Bible puts it even a little bit plainer. It says, if you can't see what God is doing in your life, you will stumble over yourself. But if you can attend to what he reveals, you are most blessed. I don't know if you've ever been to a reveal. It's always exciting because you don't know what's going to happen. But the reveal in your life is when God starts to show you something and then it says you are most blessed. I want to show you something in 2024. I want to believe that God will show you something that will be a reveal to you that will make you most blessed. So that's the first thing. I want to say about vision in your life. It's something you have to see. If you don't see it, it's difficult to comprehend. And you may ask some interesting questions this morning about, well, where does vision come from? And if, how do I get vision? Once I've got it, Jack, what do I do with it? Now, that's, those are all very good questions. I'm going to try and answer them practically, so don't go away. Now, let me just say this this morning about You know, many people that I know enter the arena of academia. They go to universities and colleges and they they acquire information there and skills because they want a career. And let me just say there's nothing wrong with that. But it doesn't mean that just because you now have a great qualification, however, that you automatically have vision. That's where the difficult part is. You can acquire all these things and still not have vision for your life. And that, you may ask now, when I say that, Jack, well, where does vision come from? If it doesn't come from the studies that I do or the skills I have. Well, I believe all vision comes from God. I believe that God gives us vision as a supernatural uh, like component to ignite our lives, to ignite your life and everything around it. And so I believe vision comes from God. But let me also just say this, that although I believe all vision comes from God, I believe that you can uh, catch vision. It's not something that you can be taught. You have to catch it. And if I can use the analogy, and I apologize for this, it's like the common cold. Uh, You know, if you want to catch a common cold, you must be around people that have sniffs and uh, people that are coughing and have colds. It won't be long and you'll have caught that uh, cold from them. You have to catch vision. You can't be taught vision. And so you have to hang around uh, people that have vision in their lives, great visionaries. And if you know them, hang around them. Before you know it, you're going to catch it. But, you know, there are also vision centers in the world. And I believe one of the greatest vision centers is the church. You know, I'm really amazed by our church, Living Word Church in Alberton, that when people come there, they say that when they ride through the gates and when they leave, eventually they feel there's such vision there that they catch something of that vision for their own lives. And that's how it should be when you attend a church. You should catch some vision for your life. But, of course, ultimately... The greatest person or visionary is God himself. God created the whole universe. And if you and I hang around God long enough, we're going to catch something that is going to be like a reveal for our lives. And we're going to be most blessed. And I trust that you are going to be most blessed in this time. 
Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a vision for 2024 for your family? Do you have a vision in 2024 for your finances, for your future, for the career that you maybe want to start? Do you have a vision? And if the answer is yes, I want to say to you, what are you going to do with that vision once you've caught it? When you start to see it, what are you going to do with that vision? Now, here's the first thing you may ask, Jack, how do I know that I have a vision? And what's the difference between a vision and a dream? Those are great questions. Now, let me start quickly to answer you. If you have a dream, that's a good thing. And the difference between a dream and a, a vision, if I may, may use an analogy, a dream, you also see something. But if you do nothing with what you see, you're just daydreaming. And so you have to put it in a frame, if I can use it. It's like a picture. You have to put uh, your, your dream is a, like a picture and you have to put it in a frame. And I call that frame vision. That's where you get context to your dream. That's where that, it makes your, your, your picture stand out. And if I'm talking about vision, the context or the frame would be purpose. But let's get back to, so dreaming is great, but if you don't put it into a context of a vision, you'll eventually forget about your dream. So let me go back to say, how do I know, Jack, that I've got vision in my life, that I've caught it? Well, if it's something that is overwhelming, if it's something that keeps you awake, if it's something bigger than you, the chances are it's a vision. If it's something small and you can just easily handle it, it's probably just a good idea. But if it's so enormous that it, it stirs you every day of your life, it is a vision. And know that vision comes from God. And uh, you may, it, it may be so big that you say, I need a supernatural assistance from God. That's how big it is. That's vision. And the second thing you can know if you've got vision is vision will always include people. Vision is never just about you and I. It's always about other people as well. And, and that's, you know, when God created the universe, he included you and I. He had vision for people. And that's, that's what makes you and I so unique. When God had a vision, it included other people. Aren't you grateful for that? So your vision and my vision should include other people. And then thirdly, um, your vision is something that... Um, you should actually, if you've got vision, you should know that you should, you should have a mandate to carry it out. And that's where the, the problem or maybe the difficulty starts to say, Jack, how do I carry out this vision that I have caught, that I've seen? How do I carry that out? Well, that's where the faith element comes in. If you've got vision, you need to have faith to take a step out and to do something. Now, uh, these are the things that you can do. Let me help you of how, what can you do to, to, to bring your vision about? I would say the first thing that you need to do is to write it down. And uh, I'm referring to a scripture in Habakkuk 2, where I think it's 2 and 3, where the prophet, uh, God answers the prophet and he says, uh, write the vision on tablets, make it plain. And of course, God wasn't speaking about electronic tablets, although it is a relevant word because there are tablets today. He was speaking about stone tablets. But you can write your vision on a tablet or a piece of paper or in a book, but make it plain so that you can understand it. And uh, so that when anybody reads it, they can understand it, the Bible says. Uh, for uh, still the vision is for an appointed time, Habakkuk says, and it says, it hastens to the end, it will not lie, it seems slow at times, wait for it, it will surely come, it will not delay. And that's maybe the way the challenge is. You say, I've got a vision, but it hasn't come about yet. And so I want to encourage you, sometimes your vision is progressive. God doesn't show everything to you. You have to wait, just wait, it will come. There may be a delay, but there it will come to pass. You just have to have faith for that vision. But the first thing you can do is write it down. And you say, why is it so important to write my vision down? Because when you and I write our vision down, we are, we are verbalizing our thoughts. We are, we are putting them onto paper. And people can actually read what we've, we can read and other people can read 
what we've written down. It also holds you accountable because it's now a document. So it's something that you can, that you can do, you can actually see. And then the second thing I would encourage you how to activate your vision is uh, tell two or three or five or even more people about your vision. And you say, why should I tell people? Uh, I'm thinking about people that are close to you or care about you. Because when you are speaking your vision, it's another sense you're using. You see, when you write it down and you can see it, it's a sense. When you speak it, it's another sense you're using. You, you're articulating your vision. People are hearing it. And when you hear your own vision, it does something for you. Speak it out because there's power in your words and power in my words. So the second thing would be to speak it out. And then the third thing I can encourage you is pray over your vision. Because sometimes there is a delay and you think to yourself, it's just lying there. It seems slow. Uh, wait for it. Um, pray over it. Let God show you something. Because when God shows you something, you start to feel something about your vision. Another sense, not just are you hearing it or speaking it or, or seeing it, you're also feeling it now in your heart. God starts to show you can pray over your vision. But ultimately, both you and I, it doesn't matter who we are and how much vision we've got, vision does not work outside of us exercising our faith. God can't do vision for you. He can give you vision. Only you can do vision for you. That's what makes you so unique. You have to step out and have a, a just a, a morsel of faith in your life to say, I'm going to start doing my vision. I'm going to start fulfilling the dream I had. I've put it in my vision and now I'm going to activate my vision and I'm going to start to do something about my vision in 2024. I want to challenge you, do something about your vision in 2024 because God is waiting to reveal something unique to you to make you most blessed. My name is Jack Vint. You've been watching Time Out. If you from any platform, please push the subscribe button. If you are sharing or commenting on social media, you are helping me to spread the gospel and to make social media more positive and in a way being a digital evangelist. So let me just say thank you very much. I'm looking forward to speaking again to you in 2024. God bless you. Have a prosperous new year and I'll catch you soon.